Hello, everyone, and hello, Dr. Artemis Morris. I have known you for years, I think since you were at the university, right? Studying to be a doctor. So I'll say that we've known each other since we were 12. <laughs> and you look awesome. You're amazing. I've seen you do some other shows and explain and educate everyone. And in this Share the Power series, I would love to hear from you because you are an amazing educator. So first, tell us about you. Thank you, Dory. I am so grateful that you asked me. And yes, we met at Bastyr many years ago and you and Sean were just so inspirational. I loved your authenticity and you still, you know, in terms of a company, in terms of a friend, you know, Brene Brown talks a lot about authenticity, but one of the things I love about your company, about our connection is how um, we're real. And this is a really important thing, especially now. So, um, and I met you when I was also professionally dancing and studying naturopathic medicine. So, you know, it was a really um, dynamic time for us to, to come together and very grateful that you asked me today. Um, so I basically, um, what I do is I've been in practice 23 years now, and I help people to achieve optimal health and well-being. And I do that using integrative medicine. So um, through my training as a naturopathic physician, I'm also a licensed acupuncturist and I specialize in nutrition. I taught nutrition for many years for the naturopathic medical school, for the master's in functional nutrition program at UB, um, also as the co-academic director of the integrative health and healing program at the Graduate Institute. And so you know, my main thing is I have a clinical background as a uh, naturopathic physician, integrative practitioner, and then I also do a lot of educating. And those two, in many ways, are the same thing. But the main therapies that I use are nutrition, specializing in Mediterranean nutrition, and I have some online programs, uh, acupuncture, nutritional supplements, which we are, we can chat about even more later. And really um, craniosacral therapy, flower essences, herbal medicine, all of the things that were a part of medicine, just medicine, you know, basically before about 200 years ago when things changed. And this is also my cultural inheritance. So growing up Greek, you know, I had chamomile tea from my mom from Greece. We had, we even did cupping when we were sick and uh, herbal medicine food has always been a part of medicine through ancient times. So I feel like my role as a physician helping people to achieve optimal health and wellness really reflects a wonderful amalgamation of modern medicine and ancient healing wisdom. Mm, I love, love that. And you are incredible with the research that you have been doing. And hopefully you'll be telling us a little bit more about that later. So what kind of conditions, um, things that people are coming to you with, they're, they're suffering and what, what comes to your clinic? So I have a general practice. So it's a general, you know, uh, primary care medicine. So for many of my patients, I am their primary doc, but in Connecticut, what I do is actually work collaboratively. And this is where, you know, I love the title of your series, Sharing Power. It's something that is very tricky at times um, because, you know, I feel the best way to do that is for us to each know what we're really good at so we can share and find that win-win. And that's what I do in my integrative medical practice. So I will refer to specialists. I will co-manage with other medical doctors, osteopaths, counselors, uh, energy healers, and create a patient-centered approach to healing. So I do, besides primary care medicine, and uh, I do it a little differently though, because I'm a naturopathic doctor, primary care medicine includes nutrition. So as you're well aware, and this is why I became a naturopathic doctor, and naturopathic medical schools are the only general practice trained medical schools that include nutrition, herbal medicine, and a holistic approach to healing during the four years of 
medical education. And that that's why I went that route rather than, you know, conventional and then later on learn more about integrative or functional medicine. Um, but really I see general practice, autoimmune disorders I see a lot. And um, in the book I wrote with Molly Rossiter on the anti-inflammatory diet for the, the for dummy series, I use some uh, patient uh, case studies in there uh, anonymously to talk about how we can really reverse autoimmune conditions once we treat the cause. So I use the principles of naturopathic medicine treating the cause. I also do a lot with women's health care, uh, with she care, as I call it. And uh, <laughs> in women's health care, you know, we have everything from menstrual disorders, polycystic ovarian system, sy syndrome, which is on the rise, PCOS, fertility, menopause, and, um, but it's all focused on empowering and working with the patient using these, uh, all of the tools that I have at my disposal. Chronic disease is another big part of my practice, you know, reducing, reversing and preventing chronic diseases. And really like the focus a lot is on prevention, but, you know, I also do complementary work with um, the oncologist in, you know, Connecticut. So really I see pretty much you know, every condition as a general practice, but chronic disease, uh, autoimmune, women's health, those are some of my favorites to work with. Um, and anyone who's motivated to change is always welcome. Wow, that's amazing. And I love it that you work with women. I was having dinner with a friend last night and she told me a little bit about her history. That was about 10 years ago where she had some pain in her abdominal area and the doctor was like dismissive and oh you're so pretty and wonderful and young you'll be doing fine and then she had to go to the emergency room a month later to get right into an operation she was bleeding internally and so women definitely need to be empowered i'm so happy that you are working with us and and of course we love you men too obviously um and so from bio immersion that was a smooth transition wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> from bio immersion products what do you love the most that you find yourself using the most and tell us how you use it because our products are quite layered they could be complex. I don't like calling them complex, but there are so many uses to each of the product. There's so much research on every ingredient. And so you look at it from this perspective, from that perspective, you use it differently in different situations. They're so powerful and they keep on giving, which is what I love about that. I think Sean was so ahead of his time when we went ahead with our scientists to actually create these products. What do you love most about the products and how do you use it? I love that question. And as you know, I've had the pleasure of doing some lectures on some of the products for specific conditions that I work with. And, you know, how about like, you know, instead of complex, I think they're very comprehensive. Um, oh. and kind of how um, because they are truly an extension of food as medicine and I feel like you know bioimmersion is a cut above the rest in terms of using food medicine products and so the garlic and I recently you know the other thing I see is in Connecticut tick-borne illnesses and I recently personally got anaplasmosis, which is a not well-known tick-borne illness that can be debilitating. It can really turn someone's life around. It can lead to chronic joint pain that becomes irreversible. And I was not treated properly by the conventional model. So I had to really rely on my integrative team to get the proper diagnosis and treatment. But the garlic is such a powerful antibacterial, antiviral, you know, so even here in Connecticut, one way I like to use it is if I'm going to go outside being exposed to ticks, like I will recommend people just take garlic prophylactically. 
garlic is so wonderful for yeast syndrome. So in terms of women's health, um, treating uh, bacterial vaginosis, treating candida, treating um, any kind of condition that is a dysbiosis. And I have one of the areas that I love lecturing about and I'm a little obsessive about, I have to say, is the microbiome. And I know we have um, lectured, you know, I've lectured uh, on this subject. Uh, I wrote an article on the vaginal microbiome um, in NDAR and it, it's, you know, anything that involves an imbalance of the microbiome, I feel like so many of your products are very useful. So the garlic, one of my favorite products that I like to use is the cranberry pomegranate because it has the D-mannose in there. And so for chronic UTIs, for, you know, just in general, keeping um, the microbiome healthy for women's health. And um, that is so important, especially because another area that I'm very passionate about is how in the world, you know, we have the highest uh, maternal um, toll for for women and babies. So we're not doing well in that arena. And especially for minority women, I'm very passionate about, you know, helping to ev even out the playing field because, and some of these products can be very instrumental with that. And I'm hoping to be able to talk to some of my sisters in, uh, you know, working on that, but the cranberry pomegranate would be great. Garlic's great for that. The probiotics are so wonderful. And one thing I love about it is I know you, Dory. I, I knew Sean, God bless his soul. He's still with us. And, you know, these probiotics, these bugs, these are like our friends, right? <laughs> you know, these probiotics are not just like, let's throw a label on it and make some money. This that's never what I've ever felt from your company. You know, your integrity is higher than any other company. And even my patients notice how they feel on these products different from other companies in terms of purity, in terms of other ingredients. And one thing that I love to tell people, so like I've got a few supplements here, I'm out of my cranberry pomegranate, which I need to reorder. Um, but like super Nathan is great with that locked orange. I mean, wow. Uh, you know, I have chickens. I'm like, I should give them some of that super Nathan to keep them calm as well. But some of these products, especially the probiotics, I feel are a cut above the rest and my patients notice it. So any kind of dysbiosis, post antibiotic, um, just in general too. So like some of the number seven, uh, the beta glucan is also one of my favorite products. And I use that a lot. Um, diverticulitis, doses mm. too. And I think I might have even written an article about that, but basically like with the beta glucan, I feel like it's a revolutionary product because it makes it so that patients can just take one thing. And this is why I feel like it's comprehensive because some, you know, patients get overwhelmed with too many supplements yes. and one of the hardest things for me to do as a, uh, integrative physician specializing in, uh, nutritional supplements and, and expert opinion in it is take all their information, all their labs, everything that they, that's happened to them, you know, from a functional medicine standpoint, and then come up with a, a very elegant plan. That's not going to overwhelm them in stages many times. And one thing I love about bioimmersion products is I could recommend something like a beta glucan for someone with chronic GI issues for diverticulosis, diverticulitis, and it's going to work because it's a combination of beta glucan, which is, has immune function also has, um, good function in terms of soothing GI tract because it's the oat beta -glu glucan and it has the bugs in it, the probiotics in it so that we're working on getting that immune system healthy healthier. It's also lowers cholesterol. So they might have hyperlipidemia. So it's working on all these levels, like I said, as a food medicine. So it's a nice, I like to like, I like your products because they're comprehensive. They're good places to start. And then they also are very effective. So um, really appreciate that about your products, your integrity and God bless Sean for, um, you know, being one of the pioneers with you on this food medicine. Thank you so much. Wow, Artemis, I like that comprehensive instead of uh, complex. Of course, I love complex things, but it does sound a bit overwhelming, <laughs> which brings me to our last question. And that's one of my favorite because I get to know you better and everyone is going to get to know you better. 
And I, I ask typically, what is your hope and inspiration for the future? And the reason I do it, because we are more than what we just do. Yes, we are in the medical industry. We do our different roles, but we also have passions. Mine, of course, is in international relations. Everybody have heard me blab about that forever. And it's exciting for me now even more because initiating a research project is, is always exciting. It's like getting pregnant and starting to develop this child inside of you. And giving birth to it is unbelievable. Taking care of it, it takes a lot to do a research project and to actually test the theory that I built. It gets me out of bed. It, makes um, my life more joyful, happier. And I feel about the future a lot more hopeful when I have that intent to find out what would get us back together here in this reality. What's gonna unite us, make us into one. And so what gets you going? What's, what, what does rev up your engine, your passion and your love in life? Thank you for that question, Dory. And I love the analogy of giving birth because, you know, with research and, and it is such a, you know, what we're all experiencing all the time, even though it feels like it's new, it's like, this is the, you know, there's the healing crisis. This is al like the alchemy of healing. There's so many ancient wisdom has really best understood these cycles that we all go through. And this is why I love, I love being able to use these ancient tools. I'm really grateful for the people, for the cultures that retain their traditional knowledge, you know, in acupuncture, in herbal medicine, and, and so much of that knowledge has been lost, you know, in terms of, you know, how women with herbal medicine knowledge were treated throughout history, um, how women in general were treated, how people, you know, even people who thought the world was, you know, actually not flat, you know, there's so many researchers, scientists, people of knowledge um, that we can call upon Avicenna, there's, you know, Theophrastus, Hippocrates, like there's, there's so much knowledge that we all have at our fingertips, but I really am so honored. And, um, you know, I feel like it's my passion and purpose to bring together, you know, our modern medicine techniques, you know, we do a checkup, but I have at my fingertips, this, you know, um, acupuncture, uh, herbal medicine, you know, and also looking at really this alchemical process of healing that I get to, I have the honor of being witness to and being able to sit with. So one of the things that really helps me in this uh, passion for transformation, really, it's for, for self-actualization. Um, and then the research part is another thing too. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about what I'm up to with that. Um, but this passion for making the, you know, it sounds corny. I feel like I'm, you know, but making world peace, making the world a better place, you know, but these are actually truly things that I feel um, as a naturopathic physician, as a holistic practitioner, I feel like I am contributing to that with every patient I connect with, because it's not just about taking a pill and lowering your cholesterol. If everyone who had high cholesterol, high blood pressure, you know, a autoimmune disorder, some type of orthopedic issue, not only went to a doctor that could, you know, Get, lower the blood pressure and then send them back to a high stress environment, send them back to chronic low level GI issues, send them back to fatigue, a bad relationship. You know, instead they go to a holistic practitioner who's interested in looking at how that high blood pressure, how it came to be, what's the cause of it. And as we know from Eastern medicine, from Ayurveda, these are systems of, from even looking at Greek medicine, Galen, like even the, the origins of the medicine that is we have as modern medicine today, it was always holistic up until a couple hundred years ago, because we are not uh, 
two dimensional beings. Like we might like to think that, oh, if I just lower my blood pressure, that's all I need. I can keep going. But that that is absolutely not true because you and I and anyone listening to this right now can think of, you know, oh, I, I was stressed out. Why was your, why did I, why did my blood pressure go up? Why did I get clumsy and have this injury? Why, you know, why am, do I have this autoimmune disorder that has incapacitated me? We all know that there are psychosocial factors that contribute to that. And we all know, and what we might not know, and this is where a practitioner like myself helps and your products help, is we might not know how to begin to change that. But it's really about self-actualization. It's about making, you know, helping us to reach our potential. And so in asking, so I, I you could see I get jazzed about helping other people reach their potential in a way that is truly holistic. You know, we're getting, I go to the depths with them or there's that abusive situation or wherever we need to go and whatever resources they need to find, or I, I can help them find to, to reach that level. But, um, you know, for me personally, like the research is very exciting as well. And I'm hoping we can collaborate more on that. So um, I yeah. originally- an ethnography and Mediterranean diet. Um, and so, you know, clinical study on that. And right now I'm working with Yale to do a study. It's a pilot study on high uh, oleocanthal, so a high an antioxidant olive oil and its effects on lowering inflammatory cardiovascular markers. And so this is another example. So for me, the research that really thrills me is research on herbal medicine, research on food as medicine. And one thing I would like you know, for everyone to keep in mind, you know, because I hear this a lot, oh, it's not well researched, there's not enough research. You know, I would really like to see a scientific model that acknowledges and incorporates, and, and Deepak Chopra mentioned this at uh, one of the, you know, scientific um, uh, conferences we were at together, is, you know, how research needs to include a model that includes traditional medicine, the thousands and thousands of years of traditional use of how my mom used chamomile tea for, for children that she learned from her grandmother. And yeah, we need to do some in vitro studies. We need to do some clinical studies, but I would really, I get jazzed about research too. And we should definitely talk. Please let me talk more with you about it. Cause you are the, you are the goddess of research. And <laughs> so, um, I would love to see that, you know, the acknowledgement that yes, the, thousands of years of women, of people who have used herbs and supplements and garlic and wild blueberries and have collected it in a traditional manner, have prepared it using traditional techniques that have been in conjunction with the environment. And that's the other issue that's here. I know you're also passionate about and Sean was, is preserving and sustaining a natural environment so that we can use food as medicine. And we, because another piece that um, I get really, like, I've found in my practice that's really important is detoxification. And mm -hmm. so many of the conditions I see, especially women's health, especially endocrine, endocrine disruptors, like these are the forever toxins in our environment, we're exposed to thousands of them every day, cancer, like any condition, diabetes even is uh, influenced by fat soluble toxins and endocrine disruptors. So I see, um, I guess what, what, um, what I'd like to see is uh, more research maybe, or more acknowledgement. I'd like to, uh, I'd love to see more emphasis on self-actualization in a way that we can be a more cooperative, sustainable society. And for me personally, um, I mean, I also love to travel and lecture and I'm doing a lecture in Greece. Everyone is welcome to come, but um, it's in April talking about food and medicine. So I love, I love lecturing on the subject and um, seeing patients transform and doing this, having conversations with wonderful people like you, Dory, who want to really bring this knowledge out that they don't have to be afraid or, um, you know, kind of cognitively think, oh, I should just do what this doctor tells me to do. You can't think uh, for yourself of like, how do I feel wow. to know ourselves better so we can create a uh, more self-actualized individuals and we can all inspire each other to be well. 
Yes, that's the transformation that, and I love the word transformation, of course, that you're talking about. And we do, we are going to schedule another one of our sessions about research because, yes, there are actually other world theories that are research oriented that give you a totally different perspective on how to research whatever area that we want to research. And it does include the ancient, all the different pieces that come from our past. And so we will talk about that. We will talk more about your research and that tour of yours in Greece. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. is. With all the good food, the sunshine in April is a beautiful time <laughs> to be in the Middle East. I mean, that is like the time to be in the Middle East. Oh my God. So we'll have to do another session soon and bring that up again because, oh, so tempting. Artemis, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody is thanking you. You are incredible. Your work is incredible. I love to think about holism in medicine, holism in politics, holism in education and sharing knowledge and love is definitely sharing our power. And so thank you for sharing yourself with us today. And I look forward to our continuing time together. Thank you, Dory. And thank you, Sean. Always with us. Always.